Hey everyone, time for another Channel Futures Fast Chat. Happy to once again be talking to Lamont Gorman. Lamont is the Director, Service Provider Channel at Trend Micro. Lamont, how are you today? How's it going, Craig? Doing very well. It's going well. Uh, excited to talk to you again. Well, let's start off with some basic trends that you're seeing right now in the MSP space. Yeah, you know, for many organizations, unfortunately, a security breach is inevitable. Even with the best and broadest preventative technologies in place, the reality is not all malicious activity can be stopped. And as recent and well-publicized breaches have demonstrated, whether we're talking about the Colonial Pipeline or the attack on JBS, or even more recently, the attack on Kaseya, the longer it takes an organization to detect and respond to an incident, the more severe the consequences. And so the, this reality has made SOC as a service offerings attractive both to clients and to MSPs. The sophistication, the commonality of these attacks are a top concern from all, for businesses across the entire world. And this has even trickled down into the SMB space. And so clients are really expecting a elevated level of protection services. The good thing for MSPs is they're willing to pay for it. So this brings a lot of opportunity as SMBs will continue to look to MSPs as a way to close security gaps. Um, but one of the other things I'm seeing as far as trends is the client's viewpoint on cybersecurity has also shifted. So they no longer view this as a checkbox. They recognize that traditional and defensive reactive approaches only go so far and a more offensive posture may be, must be incorporated, I should say. And you know, one of my favorite sayings is, MSPs are in the business of assuming client risk. And so many are really looking for a way to diversify this risk and SOC as a service solutions are a direction that many are evaluating. Yeah, all right. So let's dig into that just a little more. Uh, what exactly is SOC as a service and, and how does it work, Lamont? Yeah, so SOC as a service or security operations as a service is essentially an outsourced security approach. Uh, and this approach combines technologies such as EDR, XDR, uh, machine learning, for example, with processes uh, and a team of security experts with the key element to this approach being the human or the people element uh, and specifically access to security experts and analysts. The idea of SOC as a service is to have all the benefits of a full-blown SOC without the high investment whether that's investment in time, people, or, or money in building one out. And so for many MSPs, building out a SOC to deliver scalable and profitable managed detection and response services is just really not a practical reality. So I've been wanting to ask you, I, I've heard the term co-managed thrown around. What does that mean as it relates to SOC as a service? Yeah, Craig, you know, this is a co-working model where both the SOC as a service provider and the MSP not only collaborate, but also have a shared responsibility in securing clients, right? And so in this model, the SOC team becomes an extension of the MSP's existing IT staff. So whereas the security services being delivered are transparent to the client. So basically the SOC as a service provider is doing all these security heavy lifting at various stages of the cybersecurity framework, whether that's in the detection phase, the investigation or the response phase, but essentially the MSP is managing all of the client communications and relations. And so this working model ensures that the MSP is always in the value stream with their clients. So what then are the business outcomes an MSP can expect from a SOC as a service solution? Yeah, Craig, there's a few business outcomes that MSPs are looking to expect. The first one is around team augmentation, right? MSPs feel the pressure as a result of the IT personnel shortage. And so SOC as a service offerings really enable MSPs to better focus their existing IT resources on mission critical initiatives. It's also a great uncomplicated way for them to extend their security operation to 24 by seven. And then lastly, around team, team augmentation, it's a great, great way to bring in that security expertise without the associated expense. SOC as a service offerings also can help MSPs improve their overall cybersecurity operation efficiency. 
for example, these services allow them to respond and contain client security incidents more quickly, but also creates an opportunity to centralize and connect information, not only across security layers, but across clients as well. One of the key business outcomes that I think MSPs are looking to expect is peace of mind and customer retention. This one's hard to put a dollar amount on, but these services really allow MSPs and their clients to rest more easily, knowing that a team of skilled experts are constantly monitoring the security posture. But also these high value services are a lot stickier and make it difficult for clients to switch providers. And the last thing I'll say as far as a business outcome is these services really help MSPs tap into new opportunities. It allows them to extend their managed security services portfolio and create new MRR streams. These services also really act as a gateway into larger accounts that may have more demanding security requirements. All right, Lamont, so evaluating vendors can always be a bit of an intimidating process. Well, what are some of the things that an MSP should consider when doing that? Yeah, you know, there are a lot of new players in the market. And so cutting through the noise can be very difficult. But as an MSP, here are some of the questions I think you should be considering. The first one is, is the service a co-managed solution, right? From a client perspective, the, the service should be viewed as an extension uh, of your service delivery team. The second question you should be asking is, is the service multi-tenant? As multiple clients are underneath your company's management, cross-customer threat detection and response capabilities become necessary. And without them, visibility and the ability to respond across multiple clients is very limited and operationally inefficient. But also you should be thinking about which technologies does the service utilize? Understanding is EDR involved, is XDR involved? Are those technologies included in the price or must they be uh, purchased separately should also be another consideration. But also looking at the plethora of services out there, there's variances among them. For example, does the service include threat hunting, incident response, investigation? Some of the services are really a monitor and notify only type of service. And lastly, I would say one of the key considerations is what are the procurement terms? Uh, are there lengthy contracts involved? Are there upfront capital that's required? Do these procurement terms for this service align with how you and your customers expect to be billed? So those are just some of the considerations you should be looking at as you're considering these types of services. Great advice as always, Lamont. Thanks for joining me for this Channel Features Fast Chat. We'll catch you again next time.